If you know the Toronto streetcar system, you might think you know where the north, south, east and west ends of the system are. But are those points what you think they are? Spoiler alert, there's a surprise ending. Now, here is the streetcar portion of the TTC map. So looking at that, it's pretty easy, right? Well, no, for two reasons. One of them is Toronto street grid is not oriented with the compass points like we pretend it is. According to the city, it's generally about 16 degrees west of north. So it should really look more like that. That changes things. The second thing is, this is not a geographically accurate map. It takes after the famous 1931 Harry Beck London Underground map, which introduced the notion of having the lines de depicted as straight lines, horizontally, vertically, and at 45 degree angles, relatively even spacing between the stations, and so on. It doesn't reflect the geography as well, but it's a lot easier to read, which is why that sort of map has been adopted all over the world, including here in Toronto. Now, before we get to what the actual points are, we need some ground rules. And I'm gonna use similar rules to what I used in my video on how much of the subway is sub. I'll put magic links to that up here and I'll put one down in the description so that you can find it after you finish watching this video. Rule number one, only portions of the system in regular revenue service count. If it's a piece of track that isn't a normal passenger carrying part of a regular route, such as in a TTC yard or a connecting track like the one that connects St. Clair to the rest of the system, it doesn't count. Rule number two, the past and the future don't count. Toronto used to have a much larger streetcar system, reaching its peak close to a century ago, and there are proposals for future additions, but if it's not part of today's system, it doesn't count. Rule number three, those who regularly use the TTC will be painfully aware that it seems rare for the entire streetcar system to be in service at the same time. Sometimes it's because of the TTC doing maintenance. After all, things like rails do wear out over time, and since they're embedded in the roadway, changing them is a much bigger job than it is on a subway line. And sometimes the outage is imposed on the TTC from outside, such as if the city has to dig up the road to replace a water main, or if there's a street festival, or if the province decides to close Queen Street for half a decade to build a transit station. So chunks of the system go out of service at times, and occasionally the TTC diverts streetcars with paying customers on them onto roads that don't normally form part of the streetcar routes. For the purposes of this video, I'm pretending that every route is in service along its normal route, even though that's almost as rare an occurrence as a Bigfoot sighting on Bay Street. And as with the subway video, my final rule is that since I don't have access to things like the TTC's engineering drawings or property surveys, I'm doing what I can to measure things in Google Earth. All right, now that we have the rules out of the way, Let's have a look and see what the map actually looks like. Please pardon my childlike draftsmanship. As you can see quite easily on this map, the Long Branch Loop, where I'm currently standing, is not just the farthest west, which you would have expected, it's also the farthest south, which you might not. And if you're paying attention to the official TTC streetcar map earlier, you might have noticed that it shows Queen's Key as being farther south than the Long Branch Loop. But even without accounting for the 16 degree angle, that's not the case. If you tilt your head 16 degrees and have a look at this map, you'll see that even according to the street grid, this is farther south. Okay, so we've got two of the four compass points out of the way already, west and south. For our next stop, let's go to the east end. This is the Neville Loop at the east end of the Queen Street line. Now, on the typical streetcar map, it looks like this is tied with the Bingham Loop that's at the east end of Kingston Road, a little bit north of here. That's at Kingston Road and Victoria Park. And while Victoria Park is still farther east of here, that's only because it takes a jog to the east between those two points. If it had continued south on this pretty much the same alignment, it would end up basically here. So it looks like they're tied, but again, remember that 16 degree angle. Because of that, this is a couple of hundred meters farther east and this is the eastern end of the streetcar system. So that's three of our four compass points taken care of. 
Before we get to the fourth one, remember that surprise I promised you? Let's look at that now. This piece of track here is the streetcar exit from the St. Clair Station. This is the most northerly point on the St. Clair line. Now, it is not the most northerly point on the Toronto streetcar system. This may shock you because the rest of the streetcar system is at or south of the Bloor Danforth subway line, and everybody knows St. Clair is north of Bloor Danforth. But don't forget that 16 degree angle. This line only goes just a little bit, about a block east of Yonge Street, but other parts of the system go much farther east. And over that distance, the 16 degrees really makes a difference. So let's leave here and go to the actual most northerly point on the streetcar system. And here it is, Main Street Station. That loop of track right there is the most northerly point on the TTC streetcar system. Now, it's very close. That's less than three seconds of latitude farther north than the loop we looked at at St. Clair. It's under 100 meters. And if not for the fact that the Danforth subway line actually runs 100 meters or so north of Danforth, then St. Clair might have won, but it didn't. This is the most northerly point on the TTC streetcar system. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Please like and subscribe.